Hello, my sweet forevers. How are you? How are you feeling today? Have you spent time with your hobbies? Have you spent time with your favorite tasks? So, thank you for joining me on my next podcast. As we continue reading stress and your health from vulnerability to resilience book by Jaime Anisman. Um, but before, and we left off on page 168, the first um, full paragraph, um, but before I get started, I want to um, just give a shout out to one of my forevers who um, mentions in the comment section that they're reading a um a book and i'll go ahead and read the read the comment to you it says and that's by the other way 1639 thank you for your feedback your valuable feedback uh states i also like the mindfulness book 30 days to reduce depression by harper daniels so soothing and um, let's take a quick look on. I'm just gonna check either Barnes and Noble or Amazon for a preface or a review. So, okay, so yeah, it's called 30 Days to Reduce Depression, and on the back of the book it says, let people know you're practicing mindfulness. Post a picture of the cover via social media and include hashtag 30 days now, which I'm actually looking forward to doing. This is really neat. Our various guides share the same lessons so you can see how others are using mindfulness on their journey. Um, and this really resonates with uh, my pers- my take on life, and not just mine. You know, many. It's like a it's a wonderful community of mindfulness, uh, uniting on this unique journey of life. Uh, and then it says, "Don't forget that each mindfulness exercise has a unique hashtag." for connecting with others so that you can share your insights and favorite lessons online. That sounds like such a fun thing to do. Very much looking forward to it and hope you will enjoy these lessons and in, and um, provide your own insights as well. Um, Okay, yeah, so I have to place that book order if I don't have the time to go purchase it physically. I'll um, purchase it online. But again, thank you at The Other Way 1639 for uh, your valuable feedback. And hopefully this will help many beautiful minds and hearts out there, out in our beautiful, on our beautiful planet. Okay, let's start reading. Let's see. I like to. Are you a bookmark person or do you prefer folding the page? Maybe a little bit of both. Tell me in the comment section below. Um, one of these days, I'm going to share some of my bookmarks with you. Um, I received a very special one from a very special person. Um, I think it's the most beautiful bookmark that I have, but I'd love to share it with you. Um, so, I enjoy folding the pages and using bookmarks um, because it just, well, there's nothing quite like. There's nothing quite like uh, 
just the tangible aspects of reading. You know, I can, I know there's, you know, I have an iPad, Kindle, okay. It's just not the same as, you know, holding your book, walking around with it, just keeping it with you. It just almost feels like a, um, a knowledge companion, if that makes sense. Um, and then, you know, or if highlight, I'm not much of a highlighter, but I do like folding the pages and reflecting. I go back and, you know, sometimes I write the date where I fold the pages. It's just, just something very, um, very earthy about that, um, about doing that. Okay. I guess, I, you know what, that's actually, that actually also falls into the get category of mindfulness and awareness, I feel like. Um, having the book, um, physically having the book and folding the pages really sets that tone of just living in the moment, enjoying each awakened moment. Um, uh, we don't pay attention to little special details like that. Even. It's, uh, it's, um, they're meaningful, you know? Okay, so back to our reading. So, page 168, first uh, top full paragraph before and it's the continuation of the subtopic Ooh. inflammatory processes and suppressive disorders before leaving the topic of IFN alpha therapy in the provocation of depression it is significant that in rodents IFN alpha and stressors synergistically influence neurochemical functioning and the induction of depressive features. Patients who receive immunotherapy to ameliorate cancer or hepatitis C are likely very stressed owing to their medical condition and when combined with immunotherapy, their propensity for depression might increase. Accordingly, Treatment of cancer and hepatitis C might benefit from broad approaches that consider the patient's psychological health and their ability to deal with stressors. Hmm. Although there has been an emphasis on linking immune and peripheral cytokine changes to depression, Cytokines aren't only produced by peripheral immune cells, but can also be generated by microglia present within the brain. These cytokines are markedly increased in association with brain insults, comprising traumatic head injury, stroke, and seizure, and they can also be affected by stressors. In small amounts, these cytokines Okay, before I continue, and actually, I'm going to fold the page right there <laughs> so that I don't forget to lose my blades. Okay. How he, how, how highly permeable is the human mind and body. It's just, we're so susceptible. And, and the reason why I'm discussing this is because aside from all the scientific points and concepts, the, the continuous resonating um, common denominator is stress or stressors. And how you know, we're just so susceptible to stress and uh, 
you really have to take the time and and um, value our mental health and our overall health and if if possible some stressors are absolutely you know unavoidable like um, like keeping like maintaining employment or just uh, handling financial bills or any financial aspects in your life or even interpersonal relationships it's just you know, life is, uh, I'll say, you know, you stress, you stress is a healthy level of stress, but once we cross over from you stress to distress, um, that's where it just, it just really alters our mind and our bodies, and it just, yeah, I mean, you know, you stress is, is having that purpose and it's just that that drive for this or for whatever to achieve your dreams or to get this done or you know just your maybe figuring dinner out or you, um, worrying about your children or you know all the priorities those are healthy things that keep us on the move and going right because our minds and bodies are designed to stay in motion and that's why um, our minds are always in motion, right? For as a high percentage that our minds are always in motion, it's a, it's healthy because our mind is like the driver for our body, right? To keep us in 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 some, you know in motion. And uh, yeah, it's just um, but distress is like if if preventable. Or avoidable just it's, it's so important to just save yourself save your mind save your body from the unneeded stress because you know it's uh, it's um our experiences whether we want them to be or not can be highly cumulative right um, okay yeah, t tell me your thoughts. Um, t tell me if you, how, like, what do you deem as stressful but that you enjoy because it gets you motivated and inspired and just on the move? But then, what do you deem as distressful in your life? If you'd like to discuss that, please, um, I value your experiences and thoughts. Just throw them in there in the comments section. And, and I'm sure they'll help somebody and and uh, some of my forevers are actually some of my greatest inspirations um, in my mental health advocacy um, I won't be forever grateful uh, for allowing us you know, to learn from your journey, to learn and grow, to help others learn and grow, um, or to just walk together, you know, in, in, in our unique journeys, whether there's struggles or not, you know, having that support system is absolutely fundamental and essential. And again, as I always, uh, you know, make it a focal point is just to remember we are not alone, you're not alone. Okay, my sweet forever. So I'll continue reading and I remember where, where to pick up. Okay, in small amounts, these cytokines might facilitate healing of micro damage. Okay, this is my, okay, this is actually, if you remember from my previous podcast, one of my, one of my questions, one of my, one of my conjectures, like just one of my queries, like was how would, and to, to what extent and how would that look like, um, the cellular damage of depression or just, you know, um, the factorial contributions of depression, um, 
how much cellul cellular excuse me cellular damage can be observed like or or how much he like you know if if the healing is how regenerative is the healing like how much healing is can be observed um in you know when when somebody endures that type of cellular damage but that's what they're talking about here so this is pretty neat to to um, Okay, in the small amounts, these cytokines might facilitate healing of micro damage, but at high levels, these molecules could be neurodestructive so that they favor psychological disturbances such as depression, which might signal a poor functional recovery. And there's recovery is, recovery is possible it's always a possibility okay always never forget that my beautiful sparkles okay it is also possible that the depression develops as a result of the incapacitating effects of stroke and the lifestyle changes that follow or with the realization of an individual's mortality Studies in rodents have suggested a neurobiological explanation as experimental procedures that mimics ischemic stroke in humans led to anhedonia, a key aspect of depression, which could be attenuated by diminishing the actions of IL-1 beta. science so much and just uh, the sense of sense of exploration and not just to identify but to heal and and you know it's one of the topics I discussed in my previous podcast so um, it's um, it's really amazing so it looks like we're coming to a close on this chapter. Um, it says, before you go, so this is the outro of this, with chapter 13. Uh, the last paragraph on page 169. If nothing else, what should be clear from this chapter is that there are several behavioral, cognitive, and biological routes that favor the development, continuation, and recurrence of depressive disorders. On the one side are cognitive theories, which propose that life experiences might culminate in negative biases that favor depression. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's uh We are, we really are a culmination of intrinsic and extrinsic uh, factors. Okay. On the other side are the perspectives that neurobiological processes are responsible for the emergence of depression. Uh, these, po these positions aren't. On the other, okay, let's read that again. On the other side are the perspectives that neurobiological processes are responsible for the emergence of depression. Um, I mean, there's always a possibility for, you know, a multitude of scenarios, but um right yeah it's just it's just 
important to remember it's die. Uh, there's usually um, contributing factors. Um, while, yeah, we can focus at times on just the neurobiological aspects or the environmental aspects or nutrition, etc. Um, they all work together. Okay. Uh, on either side are the perspectives that neurobiological processes are responsible for the emergence of depression. These positions aren't exclusive of one another. Correct. That's what I was. That's what we've discussed. Um, abs yeah, it's it's all we're all just interconnected. You know, it's there's no other way to. I mean, we could always focus on one thing or the other, but we can't deny that we're so interconnected. And both are consistent. Okay, let's read that again. These positions aren't exclusive of one another, and both are consistent with the view that the confluence of genetic dispositions, earlier experiences, personality factors, and stressful events may come together to engender particular neurobiological and cognitive outcomes that promote depression. Likewise, it's likely that multiple neurobiological processes acting in series or in parallel ultimately are responsible for depressive disorders. For instance, serotonin changes could come about because of stressor elicited CRH activation or it might occur because of stressor provoked disturbance involving growth factors. Alternatively, through a series of steps, stressors, excuse me, stressors or infection could affect cytokine processes that influence serotonin and hence on to page 170, which is the continuation of this paragraph and the last paragraph of this chapter. And hence, depressive states. What determines whether an individual will become depressed could reflect whether the strain on a biological system becomes excessive so that it fails to function as well as it should. As indicated er earlier, the weak link in the chain of neurochemical variations associated with stressors will be the one that fails most readily and presumably it will, will be associated with illness. However, the weak link will differ across individuals and hence there may not be a single process that applies to every depressed individual. Correct. See, this is why I love this book. Nor would there be a single treatment that is effective, effective for each person. Of course, this is a simplistic version of what prob probably occurs as it is unlikely that any single neurotransmitter, neuropeptide, growth, or inflammatory factor is responsible for all of the symptoms associated with depressive disorders. Which brings me back to what I was speculating before is how we're just this, you know, the cum the cumulative result of a human life is really a um, just a recipe of negative experiences and positive experiences and um, that's why mental health and evaluations, diagnoses, treatments, etc. have to be custom, like uh, it's essential that they're customized individualistically um, you know, with effective communication, etc. Um, yes. So, that's the end of chapter 13. Let's see how many, how many minutes we have. 24 minutes. Okay, well, it's less than yesterday or day before. Um, but more than my usual. Um, it's, uh, it's very, um, this is very
very, it's just very important we understand what's ha happening within us, you know, and outside of us, and how how we we need some sense some sense of grounding, some sense sense of control um, in our lives and in our mental health, um, um, where we can feel a sense of empowerment, where we're just not. You know, I don't. I don't want us to just give up on ourselves. It's something that it's like the mental health discussion and just overall health discussion, keeping it at the forefront um, of our lives, our days, etc. It's just it can really save lives. Okay, so next time we will pick up on a new chapter. Four, maybe 14 I'll take a quick I'll like skim through it and see if um, you may enjoy it or not we'll see I'm also looking forward to uh, getting my new book um, written by Harper and uh, yeah I will see you soon my beautiful angels I love you um, I'm wishing you a safe blessed Happy New Year, surrounded by people who support you and love you and want the best for you and want you to be your best you and, you know, and just, just, uh, that unconditional love and support, um, that everyone deserves. <laughs>